This is your typical shake block. It's from a western red cedar tree. Um, if you can see the the apex of this point here would be about here somewhere. That would be the center of the tree and the bark would have been over here, the rounded shape of it. So each year another layer of growth is grown onto the tree resulting in a fairly large tree. Now, in order to cut shakes off of here, we want to estimate roughly half an inch thick, like that. That's called edge grain. We'll be going against the growth ring lines. And if you can see that, that is, uh, there's probably a hundred years about here. That's probably 200 years, so over 200 years even just to make a block this size. Uh, typically a big block is 24 inches long and uh, a minimum width of a shake you know, might be 4 inches. So uh, you don't want to get a shake block too small. It just ends up with a lot of small shakes. Over here we see this would have been where the bark was. Some sort of a small blemish here, maybe a burl. Over on this side a bit of flaking, but looks pretty good. And over here where the heart of the tree was, I don't see any knots going in there. So this was good quality wood, relatively knot free. Let's have a look at the other side here. There is a very, very slight wave right there, but nothing to, to affect us. So what I'm going to do here now is get the fro. This is really just a handle on a blade here, so I'm going to estimate roughly half inch minimum. That's probably slightly over half inch, so and now I'm going to get the mallet, just a piece of hardwood with a handle kind of fashioned onto it, and I'm going to hit the fro right here quite hard. Get it to sink in there, now you can let go, you notice my feet holding the block down there. So this one is crucial. You don't want to hit it way over on the end, nor do you want to hit it near the handle. And you probably saw I had my hand like this, just in case it sort of bounces somehow. And you know, if your finger's in there, that could be pretty painful. So there's hit number one. There's number two. Put the mallet down. Turn it around. You could put your knee against here, if necessary. If it's really hard to pry off, you could put your foot on here like this and lean it forward and then just pry this way very hard and it should just pop off. I'm just going to put my knee against there and pop off a shake. So here's a typical shake. Uh, you know that's probably about eight inches wide. Now the object of a taper shake is to have this side minimum half inches thick, which it is, and over here on this end it should taper down to less than that. That way when they kind of overlap on the roof uh, they just sort of fit together nicer and you actually save a bit of wood resulting in more shakes per block. So this uh, this shake is nice and straight, it's fairly parallel, doesn't really require any, sh any trimming or anything. So we'll call this number shake, uh, that's a good one, we'll keep that one. Now, to, to uh, maintain the tapering effect, I'm going to flip the block over, get the fro, put it on here, estimating half inch, get the mallet, nice good solid blow there in the middle, hand in a nice safety zone here, get it down a couple times, turn it around, and pop off another shake. Now this one here looks a little wider down at the bottom there, so I'm going to flip it over. I'm just going to trim off a little bit here. So what you don't want to do is have your finger like this because something happens and you miss. Well, So I'm going to place it. Instead of just going like this and being very inaccurate, I'm going to place it exactly where I want it. Hit it down. Peel off that kindling. And now it's a little more parallel. And uh, here it is, the half inch minimum. And over here, yes, it did taper down to less than that. So, beautiful hand split cedar shake.
add that into the pile of good ones. Now, here's a block here that should be fairly obvious that uh, there's a big kind of a bend right there. That's from a knot was right through here. So if I slice that off, you know, the shake, first shake or two are going to be have this big thing in it, but then you can see as you go it's going to become less and less. So what I'm going to do, I think, I'm going to have a look at this side over here, and I'm going to leave this part over here to the end. So the first one, I'm going to go fairly thick here, edge grain, of course. Once again, you know, the bark of the tree would have went over here, and the middle of the tree would be roughly where this thing is. And turn it around, pry off the first shake. It did split fairly nice. A little bad edge here. I'll trim that off a little bit. Here's there's something here too. I'm going to cut that off. And uh, this side is very weathered, but still in pretty good condition. And I'm going to call this, it did taper down, and it is the minimum half inch. So even though that is uh, weathered there, we will call that a good shake. Once again, I'm going to flip the block over, estimate the half inch of edge grain, good solid blow to the fro, turn it around, and pry off yet another shake. Now, this sort of weathered edge here. I'm going to trim that a little off there a little bit. This side over here doesn't even doesn't need any trimming because you know it is relatively parallel. There's a slight, slight wobble right there. Nice taper in it here. You know, half inch thick at least. So once again, nice. This is quite wet wood, it's fairly heavy. And you'll see as I go here, as I get closer to that band in it there, the wave, uh, I think I'll just call that one good, it's a nice half inch, tapers there, yes it does have this sort of a weathered look to it here, but once that's on the roof and another one beside it, you won't even see it. I'll flip it over once again, see you can still, over here, big wave, over here you can't really you can't, still can't really detect it. This one might start to show it a bit. I'm going to trim a little bit of this jagged edge off here. Otherwise, I'm going to call that, you know, a pretty wide shake. That's almost nine inches wide there. Nice coloration to it. Smells beautiful. It's like aromatherapy. Flipping block over, now we're starting to see that. Now it does taper down to nothing there, so I'm going to get this tool, trim a little of that off just beforehand, hold that with my feet, place on the fro. Now you can see why I trimmed that off, because it would have tapered into a little skinny point there anyway. And here, I'm going to get to trim this off here a little bit. And that is still, you know, that'll still fit fairly nicely onto the roof, so still another good shake out of that block. Flipping it over. Once again, I'm going to cut that off because the shake is going to taper away to nothing anyway, so. And I'll try even for one more here. That edge here. There it is. This one here didn't uh, taper that well, and it's got this big thing here. I'll, I'll put it in the good pile, but once it gets onto the roof, this little bit here left here, you know, I can maybe get some kindling out of it here. Now, here's a very, very small block here. So, how small can a block be? This is actually quite dry wood, as you can hear. And there is a little crack right here. 
this will be I'm going to be slicing it this way edge grain you can see a nice grain here this is kind of a weathered edge there so I'm probably just going to leave that otherwise it will be too narrow now what I usually do is I think which is the thicker end I kind of think this one so I'm going to start so I'm kind of a little blemish there I'm going to wave here but I think I'm going to start right here like this And there was a bit of a seam there. You can even see some sand in there from the beach. Did taper fairly nice, so got one nice shake out there. Flipping it over this time, and now we have this, which is kind of like two shakes. So I'm going to put this in the middle and split these two in half. Have a look. Didn't really taper. Got a bit of a bad corner right there. It's a little thicker and there's a crack in it, so I'm trimming that off. Now it's not taper. So there we go, we got kind of a nice shape there. And then this one here, half inch, and a little thicker than half inch. Once again, if I trim this thick crumbly part off here, now not. Well, we got uh, three shakes out of that, so a very, very small block. Okay. For the last block we're going to have a look at here is this one here. You can see the curve here, that would have been the bark here in the center of the tree, would have been over here somewhere. So the curve of the lines would sort of go through like that. So we're going to be going for edge grain. There's kind of already a nice face here. This is just weathered and rounded off. So no edge there. Looking here, I do see a knot and a knot. Two knots there. And on the outside where the bark would be, I can see something from that one of the knots here. You can see kind of a something in the grain there. And the other one would be over here somewhere. One's up over here. So I'm going to try to get one shake off of here, like this, right from the get-go. Fairly wide, but there is a knot. Okay. Oh, there's that knot in there. Uh, well, I might just leave that as is. It's, you can sort of see it here. But that'll be on the trailing edge of the shake anyway. It did taper fairly nice. It is nice and wide, so I think I'll just keep it as is. Now, here's the remnants of that knot here. So I'm going to flip it over. And as you can see, a crack here along one of the growth lines here. So, you know, I might want to actually just try to split this off here. There it is. You can see even sand in there from the beach. But uh, this basically just becomes firewood. And here you can even see the knot better here. Now you've got one knot at one end here. Just kind of gone. So we do have one in the middle there still. So, But I think uh, this one here is going to be a fairly nice one as well. Yes, that is a very nice shake. A little bit of a knot there, but that'll get covered up by the next row of shakes. Nice straight edge there. Slipping over. Now we're sort of out of that other, the other knot was here, so we've kind of cleared that one now. But we will be encountering another one here. Nice wide shake there, and the knot sort of it'll be this side's pretty flat. Here's the, the wave of the knot there, and a fairly nice taper. So, we're getting uh, quite a few hand split shakes out of this block, even though it is quite knotty. And 
there's another fairly nice shake. And now we're into this other knot down here. As you can see it in there, coming out here. So I might have to switch over to the other side here now because that's going to be pretty severe there. I'm going to sort of angle like this. It seems natural to do this, but I'm going to sort of angle like this. get a couple right here. This one's going to be pretty narrow. And it's got a lot of stuff on it here. So can this be a shake? And it's kind of narrow, but once in a while you need, do need one, that's why I'm going to put it in. Now we can see this knot starting to have affect the wood here, a slight wave. But I should be able to get a slightly wider one here now. Okay. There we go. It does have a bit of a wave, but the other shake will kind of overlap it to about here. That'll be sticking out. It gives it a bit of character. Flip it over. We might be able to get one more from this side. a bit of a wave in there uh, but nice half inch still tapered fairly nice so that's still a reasonable one now the rest of this I don't know there's just kind of a big knot really I just don't think that's worth the trouble there so we'll call it a day on that shake and that completes the lesson on how to hand split western red cedar shakes